strategies for educational success. There is a conference coming up. It is the London Strategies for edu Educational Success. And you're going to be discussing with parents on how to help or prevent the hacking in of the banking accounts, their emails, uh, their children, when to go to school, and to be aware of what's happening in the educational system. Tell us more about this conference. It, it's very vital. If you're a parent, you would have noticed that most teachers take a day off each term to do what is called an insert. So they update themselves in the new ways of teaching, what's happening educationally, whether there are new policies, they, they get updated so that it can help develop your child. If that is the case, what this conference is saying, that where is the opportunity for parents to be updated on it? So this conference is specifically targeting parents and students so that they can come in, they, so they will discuss more about the educational system. What has happened in the last five years? and what is likely going to happen in the next two years. You need to know that so that you can understand how best to work with your child or bring out the best in your child. You also need to know the, so, the, the new and the emerging um, strategies for learning. Because it's curriculum based, you need to know the strength of your son or your daughter. It's only in such conferences that you have the opportunity to, to discuss that. And then you need to network with other parents. This is the biggest thing that we found out. You found out that parents share the same problem, but they are not aware of it. They are not aware that, oh, there's something happening in this school, and oh, do you know it's exactly what's happening in the previous school two years ago or one year ago? So if you network with parents, you're able to share your burdens, share your, your, your joys and, 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 and what challenges you are facing, and then be able to deal with the situation and assist your child. So the key thing is that parent, 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 you are key and you are most uh, a, a vital uh, player in the educational life of your child. And these are tips that ideally the teachers wouldn't tell the parents because most of them don't actually even know. They're not very aware of these. That's, the pro that's an interesting point you make. The teachers in primary school went to university to do what is called the PGCE primary. So they only knew about what happens in primary school. The teachers in secondary school did PGC specific to their subjects. So maths, French, whatever subject it is. So when you look at the system, nobody has an overview of the system. Most teachers that, that did primary only know up to key stage two. The transition between key stage two and three is an alien concept to them. Except, of course, they have been parents, they've been through it. So the best way for you to learn is to experience it. The academic angle just gives you a set of facts that does not bring you into the connection. What is the relationship between key stage three and key stage five? How does that translate into work? How does that translate into university application? That is never taught. That's never discussed. It's just left, oh, we will organically know it when it comes to our time. No. We need to sit down and be able to review all of this and understand the changing dynamics between the key stages. Now, let's look at yesterday, Thursday. It was the result day for the winter AS and A-level results. Congratulations to those who had excellent grades and their predicted grades. Now, let's look at the implications of failure for the success of our year 12. It's a difficult word for me to use, failure, because if you say failure, it means literally that person has assumed that almost a noun, because failure is an adjective that describes an event that happened at one point in the child's life. So I don't want you to think that you're a failure because in the winter exam you got lower than what you were expecting. Just know that on that occasion, on that specific date, this was your, your performance that performance can, in fact, be improved if you change the methodology of your revision. If you modify one or two things, you'll find out that you get better results. So don't hang on to... Give them some tips of how to change the methodology of their revision, because that's what they want to know. Okay. How can they actually come up with better grades? It, it, it's, it's difficult to say all of that in, in a limited program like this, but a part of the seminar is, is dealing with that. But fundamentally, you must ask for your UMS score, not just the grade. So once you know your UMS score, you look at the break, your, your grade boundary. If, it's, if your UMS score is less than 10 in terms of difference between your grade boundary, then you should ask for a remark immediately. So send back the scripts and they will remark it, and it costs about nine pounds. If they remark it and they find out that you